Engage. We are artists who love backpacking. Two years ago, we started hunting for a new base camp. We wanted a base camp that could be used for our art shows and also to travel to new backpacking trails. Whether it's car camping overnight or traveling to longer backpacking trips in Yellowstone and beyond, a base camp on wheels would be the way to go. So maybe we took this concept and started scaling back. You probably observed RV culture in Yellowstone. There's the husband yelling out the window while his wife tries to guide him back into the parking space, flailing her arms like a wounded bird. Surely there must be a better option for us backpackers. So we decided to build a teardrop trailer. A teardrop is a lightweight trailer with a sleeping cabin for two people and a kitchen at the back. I discovered them in graduate school during an art history course about industrial design, where I learned about streamlining in the 1930s. These trailers get their name from the iconic aerodynamic shape. At first, Mark took a little convincing when I said, honey, do you think we could build one of these? I'm really serious. But in no time, Mark was obsessed like me. Teardrops have everything we could want in an RV. One, we can pull it with our Subaru. Two, we can enjoy the luxury of a kitchen and a mattress and still be outside. And three, it's got lots of style. Teardrops date back to the Great Depression. Throughout the late 1930s, DIY magazines published blueprints, and eventually manufacturers started selling ready-to-assemble kits. Here is a 1947 article from Mechanics Illustrated, and it's one of the most popular with Teardrop fans. Teardrop trailers have become super popular recently. There's a wide variety of DIY kits, and teardrops come in many different shapes and styles. Here are totally some examples from a Pinterest rabbit hole Kelly fell into when searching for inspiration. <laughs> so when you're looking to build one, where do you even start? How about this trailer I already owned? <laughs> this four by eight foot beauty has a 3,000 pound rated axle on leaf springs, full size tires, and a bulldog hitch. This means it's strong enough to take down those forest roads, and it's also light enough to pull behind our four-cylinder Subaru Outback. Find trailer, check. Now what? Bring on Google SketchUp CAD software. It's way cheaper and faster to make mistakes on a computer than in real life, so we can tweak those curves and design until the proportions are just right. It also allowed me to figure out all those router joinery details that I planned, and then easily transfer them onto the real wood later. We modified the geometry of the trailer frame, and Mark added a spare tire system from a Toyota 4Runner. Then we painted the frame, and then we painted it a second time because the first coat, it didn't stick. We sealed the floor with FRP and then built a substructure of two by fours with foam insulation. Using the CAD drawing, we printed a life-size paper template. We glued it to a piece of masonite and then used it to trace the sidewalls, doors, and to mark where to router the joints. Once the pieces were cut out, it was my job to sand and paint poly, sand and paint poly, sand and paint poly, and sand. <laughs> to make this trailer strong and watertight, as well as show off that birch plywood, we coated the sides and top with marine grade epoxy and fiberglass. It's the same technique you may have seen used on a wood drift boat. Simply apply layers of epoxy, fiberglass, and spar varnish for days and days. <laughs> this may have been the most stressful part of the build, where months of CAD drawings become reality. You know, I thought we could assemble it ourselves, but Kelly disagreed with me and called my friend for help. She usually knows best. We assembled the sides connecting the bulkhead to the counter and supports, and guess what? It all fit. It really started to feel like a real trailer at this point. We have a roof inside, lights, more insulation, and finally the outside roof. We had no idea if we were actually gonna be able to bend the plywood, so our strategy was to go slow, use lots of glue, lots of clamps, and a little duct tape for good measure. And now we started to work on the hatch, and under the hatch is the kitchen. I really felt like we were on the home stretch, but I was totally wrong. Building the hatch took nearly as much time as building the entire trailer up to this point. It presented us with quite a few challenges, but we trudged ahead with our trusty template. And the hatch saga continues. You can see I lost quite a bit of hair due to pulling it out working on trailer wiring. <laughs> This is the back of the trailer, you know, where the license plate light and the tail lights are mounted. 
We also have LED lights that shine down onto the kitchen area in the dark when the hatch is open. After the hatch was done, we moved on to working on the kitchen area. Here I am installing a pull-out stove. The stove will just rest in a shallow drawer and pull out sideways for easy deployment. The rest of the space down low will store pots and pan, food, and clean and gray water. And here's the finished kitchen. I love how I can wash my hands, I can make a cup of hot chocolate, and how everything has a place. The Formica countertop is an updated vintage pattern released for their 100th anniversary. But my favorite part is the pass-through door where Mark can hand me a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> the, the cool features continue into the cabin with four-inch foam cushions, a duvet made from my grandmother's quilt, reading lights and phone chargers. A cubby on the sidewall functions like tent pockets to hold all of our stuff. We also built a gear loft from recycled seatbelts that a kid could sleep on. And we are camping finally. This was two weeks ago at Mammoth and after over a year in the making. On this tri trip, we also tested out the awning that Kelly designed and had sewn at Montana Canvas. We woke up to several inches of snow, but were totally nice and warm inside that trailer. Our first trip was a success. People have asked us if we would build another one, and though there were a few tears shed while building this teardrop, we would totally do it again. We learned a lot of new skills and how to work together as a married couple, and are excited this summer to hit the road to British Columbia. After, you, after seeing the awesomeness of teardrop trailers, I hope you guys have caught the bug but I'll leave it up to you whether you choose to build one yourselves. So we'll be outside tonight. If it's not dumping rain, come and say hi. <laughs>